it's Tom Donald from the London Contemporary School of Piano. Today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on playing the blues. And playing the blues piano involves such a lovely mixture of combinations. The thing with the blues that most people don't quite understand is that the blues is not quite as free as people might think it is. It's not just a matter of sit there and play whatever you like. It's not going to necessarily sound very good. So whilst there's a huge element of freedom with playing the blues that makes it such a beautiful style of music, you sort of still have to know what to do, don't you? You can't just sort of sit there going and expect it to sound good because it won't necessarily sound good. There's still a structure there. And I'm going to quickly show you some great tricks so you can really develop some lovely blues sounds on the piano and they're not difficult at all. I think it just takes a bit of implementation between your left and your right hand. I think that's the biggest trouble. Um, so let's start. We're going to play something in G major. And uh, so this is a 12 bar blues in G major. I'm going to just quickly take you through a left hand pattern. This is a lovely barrel house style left hand. G and a D, and then I'm going to a G and an E. And I alternate between those two notes. And I get a nice beat there. Then I'm going to do the same thing on C. Two bars. Then G for two bars. Then D for two bars. C for two bars. And then G for two bars. So you want to spend a bit of time just doing this with the left hand and getting that rhythm. And you need the left hand also to be quite smooth. Not to be not mechanical. So then what do we do with the right hand? Well, we improvise with the right hand and I'm going to show you some tricks. Now, generally in the blues, uh, there's this big misconception that in the blues we do everything only on the blues scale, which is a, a beautiful scale, but it's not actually used necessarily 100% of the time. One of the most beautiful things about the blues is its integration of the blues scale with the standard classical major scale. These two worlds meet to produce this sound um, that's just quite magical. If you went back in time and you told Mozart that in the future they'll be playing music that sounds like this, he'd say, how ah, could that be possible? Um, but here we are, and it, and it just sounds absolutely wonderful. So, so usually what we do, here's a really good starting point when you're trying to develop a blues riff, uh, is to think in the major scale. So if this is in G major, here's a G major scale. But we change just one note, because there's just one note that's not quite working there in a blues context, and it's the seventh note. It's that note, it just sounds a little bit too classical perhaps, so we flatten it. So in this case it means we're playing in a G major scale, but we're flattening the seventh note, which means it's G all on white keys. This is called the Mixolydian mode if you want to speak Greek, but that's the sound. The flattened seventh, and it's used a lot in rock and roll as well. That, that mode. So if you were to do that in another key, for instance like C major, you would start playing a C major scale, but you just flatten the seventh note to have a B flat instead of a B. So we use that scale a lot in the blues. So if you're ever sort of stuck for any ideas, that's a really good place to start, just with the Mixolydian mode. And that will all work. But let's go to something a little more strategic now. Let's learn some steps, some movements with it, some, some little musical ideas, little musical cells that we can join together. And that's really the key. Um, so I'm going to start with a nicer little musical step that you can use. And it involves a triplet rhythm, so it's a little bit faster. And I'm going to play the notes. So I'm also going to flatten the third note to get a major minor effect, something we also see a lot of in blues. I'm going to get a B flat, a B, and a D. I'll say those three notes again, B flat, B, and D. And I'm going to circle them in triplets like this. So let's say I was to do that three times, and then I can do whatever I like afterwards to finish the phrase. Just improvise to finish it. with the 
left hand. This is the biggest challenge, is actually putting it with the left hand. It's not the improvising, it's your hand coordination. That's what you actually need to spend most of the time practicing. And that's, so that's a one particular sound that's quite nice. Just keep that one in your artillery, you're going to need that one later. Here's another one I'm going to show you. Very, very simple. Uh, by the way, some people when I show them this, when I teach this to them, they're like, oh that's so simple, I wouldn't be bothered using that, that's for children or something, or for babies. The simple things are often the best, they're often the most profound, so uh, never underestimate something that's simple, and also never underestimate the difficulty of pulling something off simple in a concise, you know, convincing way. Just two notes. B flat, the minor third interval. It just always sounds beautiful. Um, two notes, but you know, use interesting rhythms with it. This is particularly good if you struggle to play hands together because you don't have too many notes you have to worry about in the right hand, so it's also a very good practice technique. But let's talk about that later. Now, if you do get sick of those two notes, um, you can add a few other ones. So I'm going to show you another uh, three notes to go with those two notes. You could play G, F, and D. There's a particularly nice thing you can do with this, uh, you know, phrases like this. G, F, D, F, G, things like that. Now go back to this other one. Try and put them together and then add this one in there. Let's see how that goes. in between these different moves. Whenever you feel like it, whenever you feel like, oh, I've got enough of that, I'll go to this one, I'll go to that one. and it, it, they're, It's all very interchangeable. It's all very compatible. They all fit together, and that's the beauty of it. Um, it's almost like you've got a separate different phrases and words, and you can join them all together and, and build a nice musical conversation. Now, if you want to take things up a notch and you get a bit rock and roll with it, um, this is a classic one, and it's so fun. It's a little bit physical uh, for some players because it takes a bit of speed when, in your playing, but sometimes it's fun to practice things that are fun fast and loud, so let's let's do it. This is a D and a G, and it's best you play it at the top of the piano. You get sort of a nice harsh, uh, bluesy sound uh, that you, you can't quite, you're not quite allowed to do when you play classical music. Uh, and so you just, it's triplets. So again, just with a D and a G. Again, so simple, you might think, oh, this doesn't mean anything. Then let's just squash a C sharp against the D on um, every six uh, uh, beats. Let's see what happens. That's a great trick. So it's a great way to shift the gear up to something a little bit more explosive. some fun.